so I'll start off with the bottom of the list. So this is numero five -oh. This is numero five -oh. This is Amazing Spider-Man 500. The single issue. The single issue. Oh, okay. John Michael Straczynski wrote, and John Romita Jr., or JRJR, mm -hmm. drew this. Um, it's a single, self-contained issue set in an airport in which Peter Parker is meeting MJ. Yep. And then in between trying to win her back, has to help Captain America, who is actually trying to prevent Doctor Doom from being killed right. by a bunch of terrorists because they're extraditing Doctor Doom. Because, you know, for those of you who don't know, he's a Latvian dictator, mm -hmm. so he gets uh, diplomatic immunity. Doesn't matter what he does, he gets away with it because he is... A dick. Tater. Tater. We're on the same page on that. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Uh, what I love about this, because I hadn't really read Amazing Spider-Man for a while, during that JMS run, uh, there I remember there were pockets that I checked out, like uh, you know, with the Ezekiel and Spider Totem. Yeah, there's some really good issue. Uh, Morlon. Morlon. Did whole... that thing with uh, Madame Web and everything. Like, yeah, there's like, a lot of really all cool of this stuff that's all tied mythology. together. Yeah, like uh, tying into a, uh, an actual like supernatural mythology to Spider Man yeah. that they had never had done before, which could have gone two ways. It could have been just fucking garbage or in this case it was really awesome and yeah I think, and of course uh you know i'm a huge fan of john michael straczynski i mean uh, i'm surprised actually as i'm talking about this that uh, squadron supreme didn't uh, or supreme power didn't make the uh the list but that's partly because it's unfinished it's unfinished i know to I, I, I actually i mean there's aspects of finished to it i was looking at that too yeah but no it, it was unfinished because marvel's like no, we're going to PG rate it because then Straczynski came back and did like five issues of Squadron Supreme. That's and right. then said, fuck this. Yeah, it's, yeah, but then uh, uh, what I'm saying is it's kind of it's kind of finished because they carried on those characters. Yeah. Around Ultimate and stuff like okay. that. So there's a level of finite? Mm. Finito to I, it? I feel like he had another six issues and then that would have been a complete. Like a proper computer. Either one. Like, even the Max run. The Max run could have been, like, two... Max run was amazing. Oh. It was so good. The... Him and Gary Frank. All those are... This amazing. is an, a runner-up right here. This yeah. is a runner-up. Okay, I dig that. Because him and Gary Frank, that run was crazy cool. Yeah. Taking a, like, straight-up Justice League parody. Yeah. And then turning it on its head. So, like, so much so that I wanted to read the original mm -hmm. uh, Mark Grunewald run. I'm verifying that everything is plugged in. Oh. I'm very just like, I need to hang a mirror behind there just so I can <laughs> watch it. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so that Mark Runewald Wald run, I wanted to, because that was... That was the original 12-issue one? Yeah. Okay. The Maxi series. The Maxi series. And uh, that's I, where a lot of the racial stuff comes from, mind control and all this other crazy stuff that I feel like they could have pushed towards doing with their own spin and you can't like I said you can't top Gary Frank's art like that it was just no hyper realistic not at all and I you know I had I, as far as I know I hadn't seen his art anything prior I don't remember so when they were like Gary Frank's coming it. on here and I saw I was reading like Wizard Magazine and everything a lot of people were making a big deal about Gary Frank doing this was wasn't like, he on the Rising Stars uh, didn't he and JMS do that one together too I he, no Rising Stars was someone else I think Midnight Sun or Midnight Either way, I remember something. you were you were really pumped about it. And I was in the same. I was like, okay, all right, like I haven't heard of it. And then like you read the first issue and you're just like, holy shit. But anyway, so uh, John John Michael Straczynski, he's a lover or hate it kind of guy. From what I've noticed, he really is. You either really like him or you don't. And even some of the stuff, like the only stuff in that Spider Man run that I didn't really like was the uh, Norman Osborn Gwen Stacy thing. The Gwen Stacy thing. The twins? Yeah. Uh, especially because you had the shitty Grey Goblin, which was so shitty. That whole, like, arc, even though... And, and Mike Diodato is not a Spider-Man artist. No. He was awesome on Hulk. Not good on He's, spider He is a really good artist, not good on Spider-Man. But anyway, so I, I kind of left it for a bit. So then to come to this issue, and it's... Like, at first, it's literally just Spider-Man saying, like, or Peter Parker just saying, like, in between... Uh, being Spider-Man and P Peter Parker just saying like he, he loves her and Mary Jane is saying like you know but sometimes love's not enough because you know you love your aunt and you love your dog and you love like you love all these things 
you know, mm-hmm. and then at the end of it, the whole crux of it is he, he finally breaks down and he says, like, but I, like, I, I, yeah, you're right, I love you, and I love all these other things, but I need you. Nothing feels right without you. My life is not good without you. So, uh, and that's kind of why when I read the first issue of Nick Spencer's run, where he does something similar, where he's just like, everything is going to shit. It doesn't do that when you're with me. So I was like, oh, yeah, because it reminded me so much of that. And like that issue, uh, for the longest time, would get me tearing up at that part because it was just one of those, like, whoa. And then when I actually, when I got married, I, you know, I found that love. You feel that. You're so like, I get oh. it even more. So now it's not so much that I'm like, uh, like not so much sad, but I, I don't get this teary eyed because now I, I get it. Like, I see it now. I'm just like, yeah. Like, when things are driving with me and Michelle, everything feels like it's perfect. Like, I can't do anything wrong. As soon as things aren't driving, then it's just like, oh, like, fuck, like, all these things just kind of, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it was a very adult take on Spider-Man, mm-hmm. and I love that uh, JMS wasn't one of those guys who wasn't afraid to uh, have an adult conversation between two fake, like, I know. bullshit characters, like, just phony. Such people, a good writer. You know what I mean? And, like, to actually literally sit there and say, no, uh, we... This is how I feel about their marriage. Yeah. This is how I feel about them as people, you know, and then just really like, and, um, John Rita Jr. has always been like a big bombastic artist. Yeah. Just like his dad, big, yeah. huge, but he doesn't get a lot of praise for his character work. And I remember, uh, when I first, uh, heard he was going on Spider-Man, I was a little iffy on Amazing because he'd always been like big guys like Punisher and Daredevil and stuff like that so I wasn't sure how he's going to do Spider-Man and you could see in the first couple issues he's a bit more blockier and stockier Mm -hmm. but then he starts to lean him out and he just gets so good good point yeah that's true you know and this is like right when he's at like the height I feel like they're both in a synergistic sort of like this is what I'm going to do and he's just like yeah yeah I'm going to draw this this and this and John Michael Straczynski is just like just do it. Just Have at it, man. Can do it, and like just that scene where they're holding each other, literally, just like I need you, I yeah. love you, and, and that's it. And then that's that's perfect. Like they're back together. I was like, man, that's still like when I talk about favorite comic because it's the one that comes up almost all the time. That's really cool. Uh, I revisited number five hundred a few years back. I really enjoyed it. Like when I was younger and I read yeah. it, I really enjoyed it. Um, it's very memorable to me. Like as soon as you brought it up, I like I saw Doctor Doom in my head walking through the airport. Like just yeah, boom, and I saw you know the MJ and the conversation. Like it's in my head. Like, like I even know the part that, where she's just like, "No, take issue. the mask off." Yeah, I want to talk to Peter. Yeah, I was like, "That's awesome." I know it's so good. Yeah, but reading it older, I respect it a lot more now because they were older versions. Exactly. Like they were older versions, so now I'm reading it. And I'm just like, "Oh God, this is so good." Like I get it more so now because I'm married than I yeah. do than I did when I first read it. And when I first read it, it is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Now it's it's almost like it's even more beautifuler. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> for me, like back then, because we were like teenagers, I think, or yeah. late teens, maybe when I came out. Maybe maybe late teens, late, early, late teens or early twenties, maybe around there. But I back, forgot to check the date. Actually, back then it was uh, it was Ultimate Spidey number thirteen that did that for me because it was the same thing. It was them having a conversation, but it was the young versions of them having <clears> a conversation, <throat> and that I could connect more to at that age. Yeah, that was really you know good. What I mean? Thirteen was really good, but I also liked the uh, the talk. Yeah, when with uh, after new, all the man. all the clone saga yeah. happens, and she has the heart attack, and he's like, "Fuck it, like I'm Spider Man," and all this stuff, and then she's like, "Okay, so." So you're Spider-Man, right? Mm-hmm. And that whole thing, and the only thing that I, I have to say that edges the 13 out yep. is because Bagley doesn't draw the whole issue. This is where they're sliding in Stuart and Monin. For number 13? No, 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 for the talk. Oh, the talk. Just keep doing your thing yeah. there. For the I, talk I did remember one thing I forgot to do in here. So What's that? Um, put it on my Do Not Disturb Airport mode. Oh, hey. Because you knowing my mom might text me like last time <laughs> yeah. or phone me. <laughs> yeah. But like, uh, yeah, because that was uh, the last issue for Mark Bagley and the first issue for Stuart and Right. Mike. Right. I have to knock him on because he had a really good run and he was a really good. Uh, Amon is a really good artist, but I just mean, overall. But Bagley. He's he did what, 113 consecutive issues? Still one of my favorite Spider Man artists. It's amazing. It's like, absolutely amazing. Just incredible. And then for him to come back and do The Death of Spider Man. 
That was awesome. I was but, so uh, happy you came back for that. But yeah, so that's it. So, so that's your, Amazing yeah, Spider-Man Amazing 500 Spice. is like the fifth. I love that. You know? <laughs>